are cursed fellows, I'm cursed Hawkeye and that's my first animated vlog. First and foremost, I want to thank you all for the 1000 subscribers, for all the comments and support you are giving me. Thanks. Well then, let's start with the latest hot topics regarding the One Piece world. In Chapter 801, many characters from the past volumes are finally shown again. After their defeat at Eni's lobby, we come to know thanks to the mini-series of Chapter 491 up to, to 528, that all the CP9 members are declared wanted by the world government. They are thus forced to flee, and they ended up in Street Poplar. They needed to raise money to pay for the medical treatment required by Rob Lussi, and so they start working. After Rob Lussi's recovery, everything seems alright. They go shopping around the city or having fun to a bowling alley. That is, until the candy pirates invade the town. The CP9 quickly gets rid of them, however they were forced to leave, after Lussi's excessive brutality towards the captain, which horrified the citizens. The CP9 then returns to their homeland where the future generation of Cypherpol is being trained. Here, the marines show up to capture them, but the CP9 once again defeats the enemies easily. Then, using a and mushy of the said marines, they contact Spandam, telling him that they would return. In the second last episode of this mini-series, we see Spandam and his father plotting the obliteration of CP9. However, in the latest chapters, we see Spandam and Rob Lussi, and not only are they working for the world government, but they are even part of the CP0, which is the strongest intelligence organization among Cypherpol, according to Nico Robin. And Spandam is now, a subordinate to Rob Lussi. Just what happened this time? Then there's, Do Flamingo, which gives us one of most important speeches of the chapter. Without him, the world is going to be in chaos. The person that ensured a balance of power, is no more. And so now, without Do Flamingo, the war that will decide the future Pirate King, is going to start. The big wave, that will overtake anything and anyone, is getting bigger. The Marine is clearly experiencing difficulties, as proven in Dressrosa. The pirates of the worst generation, came back even stronger and the most aggressive ones aligned together. Not to count, the revolutionary army, who's going to rule, on all the seas, who's going to sit, on the pirate king's throne, but most of all, who's going to ally with who, and who's going to betray who. These are the most exciting things because anything can happen. The other important info, is the official definition of clan, family, for the D. Either way, the reverie, or in other words, the meetings that are held every four years in Marajoy's, in which all the kings and queens meet to discuss about issues that could affect the world, is close. Just how epic would be an attack from the revolutionary army, in Marajoy's, right now? The world would be completely destabilized. As for chapter 802, Odar left us with a panel that supposedly showed, the seventh Shikibukai. Said, character looked a lot like the mysterious guy, who was talking with Crocus. However, we come to know that the seventh Shikibukai, is the self-proclaimed son of Whitebeard. His name is Edward Weebel. Surely that Weebel, together with his egg-like shaped body and his childish nature, recalls some Hasbro toys, called in fact Weebels. The physical principle behind these toys, is simple, the lower part of the egg needs to be the heaviest part, so that with gravity it will always stay up, no matter how much you push or tilt it. Which can mean that basically no matter how much he's going to be hit, he's always going to stay up. Which by itself, sounds a lot like the Hasbro catchphrase, we ebels wobble, but they don't fall down. Perhaps the power of this guy, is related to never falling down? Anyways, if he is Whitebeard's son, and wants to avenge him, then why would he lie with the world government which helped taking him down? Perhaps the old lady is taking advantage of his stupidity, and in a way that reminds me a lot of Bubbity and Majin Buu, from Dragon Ball. Maybe just for money, or she has come to an agreement, with Gecko Moria. I said Moria because, apparently, Edward Weebel looks like a zombie. The incisions on his body are similar to those made by Dr. Hogback. Perhaps Moria will appear again. Who knows? And then there's, the huge elephant that turns out to be Zoo, and since it's 1000 years old, it lived during the 100 year void. 
The idea of a city, island, placed on top of an animal, is not really new. It has been used by other writers, mangakas after all, and is also present in one of the biggest religions of the East, the Hinduism. In fact, in the Hinduism cosmogony, the world is a half-sphere placed on top of four elephants, the latter's of which placed on top of a giant turtle. It raises a question though. Given that the elephant seems to be walking few meters above the sea, is it just because it's a shallow part of the sea, or are its legs really long? In the first case, it could be justified by the Hindu myth we discussed earlier, where the elephants walk on top of a giant turtle. In the second case, it could be a reference to Salvador Dali, a famous surrealist Spanish painter. Anyways, I wonder, if Chopper would be able to communicate with the elephant, it could reveal some details about the voyages. I also really like the hypothesis that, given that it's really old, the elephant is heading to its birthplace, just like in the legendary elephant graveyard theory. And at last, we finally come to know about one of the last traces, glands, of one piece, the minkman. In fact, Kanjiro reveals that on the back of the elephant, isolated from the rest of the world, lives a clan of people that hate humans and anything that resembles them. Maybe they were isolated, just like the fishmen, or maybe they voluntarily wanted to be isolated? The only thing that's certain, is that they seem to be persecuted by Kaidu's lackeys. Probably the Lord of the Beasts, is reclaiming some sort of supremacy upon these minkmen, they are man-beasts after all. Anyways this special is over. There's more I wanted to discuss about, but I guess that would make the video too long. If you liked it, leave a like, a comment. And of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. If you have ideas to share with me, then write it in the comments. It can be anything, theories, analyzers, and so on. I'll try my best to meet all of your requests. See you next time.